Hi everyone, in this video we're going to introduce the mean value theorem, we're going to visually understand it, state the physical intuition, state it mathematically rigorously, and also prove it right from scratch. My name is Amitesh, I'm a research mathematician, I've received my PhD in math at Princeton University, and after graduating I've also received a university-wide faculty teaching award teaching math classes at Princeton University, and in this video I'm going to show you how a research mathematician thinks about the mean value theorem right from scratch. So let's understand the following picture. This is a picture of a graph of a function f of x between two points on the graph a comma f of a and b comma f of b. And what the mean value theorem is stating is very cool and simple to visually understand. So here what we do is we draw a line that goes, connects the two points of the graph. This is the secant line, okay? And what it does is it's just connecting those two points and its slope is going to be the change in y by the change in x, okay? So the slope of the secant line, so I'm gonna write it here, the slope of the secant line is going to equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay, that's a change in y by the change in x. And the mean value theorem states the following, that at some point in the graph between a and b, the slope of the tangent line is going to match up with the slope of the secant line. And if you sort of look at the graph, you can visually picture that as follows. You sort of say that if you take this point here, you know, roughly somewhere there, and if you draw the tangent line to the graph at that point, it is going to be parallel to the secant line. So let's say this point is c comma f of c. And in the language of derivatives, the slope of the tangent line at c is just going to equal to f prime of c. So the mean value theorem is saying there is some c inside the interval so that the slope of the secant line is matching up with the slope of the tangent line, or in other words, f prime of c. Okay, so that's what the mean value theorem is stating. Now, here's the physical intuition for it, which I really love, and it's really simple and just makes everything so obvious in some sense, is imagine you're driving in a car and the function is the distance you're traveling with respect to time. Okay, so it's a function of time, it's a distance function. If you think about the slope of the secant line, this is going to be the total distance traveled divided by the total time, which is the average speed. Okay, so you can think of this as the average speed. And now the question is average speed or average velocity, if I'm being precise, because it could be negative or positive. And then if you look at f prime of c, that is the instantaneous speed or the instantaneous velocity. Okay, so it's going to be the instantaneous velocity um, I'm just going to use speed, but we understand that it's a velocity because it has a direction, it could be positive or negative. Now the point is that the mean value theorem states that at some point in the interval, your instantaneous speed is going to match up with your average speed. And this makes sense, because if your instantaneous speed were always above your average speed, your average wouldn't be your average anymore. It would have to be much higher, right? An average of a bunch of numbers that is greater than zero has to be greater than zero. Right? So if you have an average, sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. So that's basically what the mean value theorem is stating in physical language, which I really like. It's pretty straightforward. So let's now dive into how we state this mathematically and also prove it. And I'm also going to show you, you know, there could be multiple such Cs. Okay, so for example, you could draw a graph. I'll show you another example. The point is that if you draw a graph like this, whatever the graph may be, you can kind of, even if it waves around, you could have multiple Cs where the tangent line has the same slope as the secant line. So here the secant line would be like this, and you have tangent lines at these two points matching up in slope with the secant line. Okay, so the mean value theorem is guaranteeing there's going to be at least one such time. So let's state it rigorously. Okay, so we've drawn all the pictures, we understand what it's intuitively saying, and this was proven by Cauchy, he's a famous mathematician. Uh, he proved the mean value theorem, and it's really cool, and it kind of comes down to a proof of Rawls theorem. Okay, so I've done a video on my channel proving Rawls theorem, so please check that out. It's completely like rigorous from scratch, explaining what Rawls theorem is. We're going to talk about it again in this video. So you don't need to watch that video, but I recommend watching that after this video because we're going to use Rawls theorem. But Rawls theorem is going to be like an intermediate step. Okay, so you don't even need to know what it is. We'll talk through it. But the point is for the mean value theorem, Rawls theorem is a special case of the mean value theorem. So let's take the mean value theorem first of all. Okay, so the mean value theorem says that let f of x be a continuous function on an interval, okay? So let f of x be continuous on an interval a, b, okay? This is a closed interval a, b consisting of all points between a and b. If you like, you can say it's the interval 0, 1, okay? So all numbers between 0 and 1 included, 0 and 1 included. Okay, so f is continuous on a, b, differentiable, so differentiable on the open interval a, b, so differentiable on the open interval a, b, so we don't care about differentiability at the endpoints, just inside the interval. 
Um, and so if you have such a thing, then for some point C inside the interval, for some C inside AB, so this notation means C is between A and B, A less than C less than B. We have that F prime of C is going to equal to F of B minus F of A divided by B minus A. Okay, so in other words, the slope of the tangent line at C is matching up with the slope of the secant line of F on that interval. That's what the mean value theorem is saying. Now, Rolle's theorem is a special case in the following sense. Rolle's theorem is just the mean value theorem when F of B and F of A are equal. Okay, so Rolle's theorem, so I'm just going to state this here. Rolle's theorem is just the case when F of A is equal to F of B. So what's, what's that basically? That's when the graph of the function starts at a point, maybe goes up and comes back down to the same value. Then the mean value theorem is saying, or Rolle's theorem is saying that f prime of c is zero for some c, because in this case f of a and f of b are equal, so the right hand side is zero. And the mean value theorem is saying there's a horizontal tangent line. Where f prime of c is zero, that means the tangent line is horizontal. Um, and that's kind of, again, intuitive, but that's a theorem we're going to have to use um, to, to prove the mean value theorem. But the rough idea of the proof of Rolle's theorem is say that there has to be a max or a min of the function because it's a continuous function. And when it's a max or when it's a min, that's going to be where your derivative is zero. So um, that's, that's the rough idea. But check out my video and I've really explained this in detail. And you know, it'll really make Rolle's theorem you know, very clear. But we're going to use this statement of the mean value theorem, okay? That the theorem is true when f of b and f of a are equal, and then we're going to prove it for any function, even if f of b and f of a are not equal, okay? And the trick is going to be the following. So here's going to be the proof. What we're going to do is, you know, if you have a function where f of a and f of b are not equal, for example, like we drew at the beginning of this video, then what you can do is you can look at the slope of the secant line that connects f of a and f of b. Okay, so whatever the graph of f is. Okay, so f may be, you know, some kind of graph that's different, but you take the secant line that goes through the two points in the graph, which are just basically a comma f of a and b comma f of b. And what you want to do is you want to subtract off. You want to create a new function and apply Rolle's theorem to the new function. So if you think about kind of this, this graph, this line, its slope is something, right? Its slope is the slope of the secant line because it is the secant line if you look at the black line. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define a function g of x is equal to f of x minus mx, okay? Well, mx, m is the slope of the secant line, okay? So here m is just going to equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. And the point is that by subtracting off mx, you're kind of normalizing the graph so it's as if this were the x-axis, okay? Rather than saying the x-axis is what it is, so f of a and f of b are different, it's like saying the x-axis is now this black line, which is a secant line, and now f of b and f of a are going to be the same, okay? So not quite the x-axis is the secant line, but something parallel to the secant line, okay? So mx, of course, you know, this line is a parallel line to mx, um, and so um, this is kind of going to be parallel to the x-axis. So in some sense, we've made f of a and f of b the same, and we apply Rolle's theorem, okay? So that's going to be the proof. So how do we execute that? g of x equals f of x minus mx. So what you can find out is you can solve for, you know, you can even find that the m that you need, so that g of b and g of a are equal, so you can apply Rolle's theorem, is actually just f of b minus f of a by b minus a. So here's how that works. So if f of b minus mb is equal to f of a minus ma, so in other words, this is g of b and g of a, right? So if g of b is equal to g of a in brackets, then you can solve for m and you can show that the one m that has to satisfy this, so I'm just going to erase this from the board, the one m that satisfies that equation is going to just be f of b minus f of a by b minus a, and that's going to be, um, that's going to be the following. So let's just write this out. So if you have that equation there, so if you're trying to find an M, right? So just to kind of show you how you come up with it. If you're trying to find an M, then knowing that F of B minus MB is equal to F of A minus MA, if you solve for M, you're just going to get that, um, you can put on one side the F of A, F of B minus F of A is equal to MB minus MA, which is equal to M times B minus A, okay? So therefore, m is going to equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So this reasoning is reversible. So if m was f of b minus f of a by b minus a, you know that 
this function g of x you define here satisfies g of b is equal to g of a. So that means it satisfies the hypothesis of Rolle's theorem. It's a continuous function, right? It's a difference between two continuous functions. It's continuous. It's differentiable on the interval. So therefore, at some point, the derivative of this function is kind of normalized. So the secant line is parallel to the, the new x-axis in some sense. It's kind of something parallel to the secant line. So if you now apply Rolle's theorem, so I'm just going to erase this now, uh, apply Rolle's theorem, then what you do is you know, so here's the proof that G satisfies the hypothesis of Rolle's theorem. So I can just erase this from the board. G satisfies the hypothesis of Rolle's theorem. So by Rolle's theorem, so we can write this G of B is equal to G of F of A. So by Rolle's, G of A, so by Rolle's theorem, we know that um, we can conclude that um, G prime of C is equal to um, zero for some C inside the interval a, b. And now you can see that that's basically saying that therefore, well, what is g prime of x? Using the difference rule of differentiation, it's going to be equal to f prime of c minus m, right? So that's equal to 0. So therefore, f prime of c is equal to m, which we know by our choice is equal to f of b minus f of a by b minus a. OK, so that's going to be our proof of the mean value theorem using Rolle's theorem. Check out my video on Rolle's theorem for a proof of Rolle's theorem. But that's how Cauchy proved it. So super cool, super simple. And um, I really like, you know, this mathematically rigorous, something that seems obvious, but we stated it formally. You know, we've, we've gone through a sequence of steps and it's completely watertight. And now I'm going to show you, you know, watch till then, I'm going to show you two fundamental facts in calculus we use all the time why these follow from the mean value theorem. Okay, so this is very important. This is the whole point of the mean value theorem in some sense, are these two facts. So I'm going to now erase this all from the board. So the two facts are one, why is it true that if a function has a derivative of zero, that in fact it is a constant? Okay, so we know that a constant has a derivative of zero just because it doesn't change. You know, you can use a limit definition of a derivative if you like. But why is it true that it's the only function with a derivative of zero? So that is going to be a consequence of the mean value theorem. Okay, so let's state this theorem. So this is a theorem, very important theorem. It's a basis of integration. You know, if you've seen integration, it's a basis of why we add the C that there can only be one antiderivative up to adding a constant. And here's a theorem that if um, f prime of x is equal to zero on an interval, you know, let's say on an interval a, b, and f is continuous on a, b, continuous on the closed interval a, b, then f is equal to a constant. Okay, so then f of x is, is a constant. Okay, so why is this true? Well, basically apply the mean value theorem. The point is that if f prime is zero always on the interval, the tangent line is always horizontal. So therefore, by the mean value theorem, if you think about it, um, you know, the slope of the secant line has to match with the tangent line at some point. Therefore, the secant line has to always be, uh, the secant line has to be horizontal, okay? So, um, and therefore, you know, you can sort of show the function is constant, okay? So here's how the proof would go. So we have to be careful because we want to show every secant line will have to be horizontal. So the argument I gave will show that, but let's just be precise about it. So here's the proof. Um, let, let's take a point inside the interval a, b, okay? So let's take a point, um, let's call it y, okay? So let y be inside the interval a, b. Um, now what you can do is, I can put the closed interval a, b here. Now what you can do is by the mean value theorem to f, so apply the mean value theorem, which we call MVT. Okay, we abbreviate as MVT typically, apply the mean value theorem um, to f of x on the interval a comma y. Okay, on the interval a comma y. So we know that the slope of the secant line between the graph of the function at a and the graph at, at, at y, um, the slope of that secant line is going to match up with the slope of the tangent line somewhere in that interval, but the slope of the tangent line is always um, zero. Okay, so that should mean that f of a and f of y are equal, so that's, that's the proof, but let's just write it out very precisely. So apply MVT to f, f of x on the interval a comma y, so then we get that um, f of y minus f of a divided by y minus a is equal to f prime of c for some c in the interval, for some c in the interval a comma y. But we of course know, we know that f prime is always zero by assumption, right? We know that the derivative of the function is always zero. 
So therefore, that means that f of y is equal to f of a. And since this is true for all y, so in math we'd say since y was arbitrary, we know that f is always equal to f of a. f of x is always equal to f of a. So this is true for all y in the interval a, b. So therefore, f of x is a constant. Okay? It's always equal to its value at a. Okay, so that's going to be the proof of this theorem. Um, it's a very fundamental theorem. Derivative is zero, it's therefore constant. And now the other theorem is that you can then use this to show that you know when you're taking antiderivatives, if you know what that is, I'll just leave a comment here. If you're taking antiderivatives, if you have two functions that differentiate to be the same thing, they have to differ by a constant. Okay, so let's kind of write that out. So I'm going to just quickly erase this and write that out too. Okay, so corollary of the mean value theorem is the following. So here's the corollary. Um, if f prime of x equals to g prime of x um, on an interval, um, let's say on an interval a, b, and f, g are continuous on the closed interval a, b, so f and g are continuous on the interval a, b, um, then you can say that in that case, then um, f of x is equal to g of x plus c, for some constant c. Some constant c on the interval a, b. Okay, so on the interval a, b, that means that f of x and g of x differ by a constant. So why is this true? Well, apply the theorem to, if f prime of x is g, of, g prime of x, so here's the proof. Um, let h of x equal to f of x minus g of x, and then apply the theorem to h. Okay, so we know that, if h of x is f of, f of x minus g of x, then h prime of x is zero because by assumption f prime of x is g prime of x. So the derivative of h is zero everywhere. And if the derivative of h is zero everywhere, um, by the previous theorem we just showed, h has to be a constant. So therefore f of x is g of x plus c for some constant c. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you loved that video. Comprehensive guide to the mean value theorem right from scratch. You know, didn't have to know what it was before, but now you not only know what it is, what the physical intuition is, uh, how to visualize it graphically, how to prove it, how to prove corollaries of it, even if you haven't got a familiarity with mathematical proofs all from scratch. And you know, my channel has lots of math. I take you on a journey. You know, I'm not here just to present concepts to you. I'm here to take you on a journey. So we're in it together. We are trying to understand some math concept, show you the thinking process, not just a polished kind of outline like you do in textbooks or in lectures. Um, in high school or college. And my math, you know, I'm trying to create elite free accessible math education for everyone. Okay, so for all levels of math, you know, before you click away, I just want you to know I'm trying to create this project to help as many people as possible. And so it's really, I'm really grateful you've watched so far. You know, please leave a like, subscribe, share with friends and family because there's math for everyone. And I present a unique angle on it. You know, I'm not just teaching it like books and, and you know, universities or schools, I'm teaching it in the way you think about it mathematically because I have a very advanced math background. I think about open problems for a long time and I know how the process or the thinking process goes and I'm trying to deliver elite level math education right to you, right to everyone who's watching my videos. So wish you all the best, I'm here to support you. I wish you all the best, good health, success, positivity, happiness, and welcome to my channel if you haven't, if you're new here, and I'm super excited to see you in the next video. Please take care, and I'll see you soon.